Forgiveness means deciding that someone who has wronged you doesn't have to pay. Yes, we all love to be forgiven and get a fresh start. A do-over. That kind of reminds me of the game of freeze tag, right? You might mess up and get tagged, but it, all it takes is someone to help you and you get a redo. Our memory verse this month is all about forgiveness and giving people that redo. Let's say it together. Put up with one another. Forgive one another if you are holding something against someone. Forgive just as the Lord forgave you. Colossians 3.13 Remember to come tell me the verse in the foyer so you can get a candy and a point for the kids team. Let's practice one more time. Put up with one another. Forgive one another if you are holding something against someone. Forgive just as the Lord forgave you. Colossians 3.13 
If you've been hanging out with us this year, you know we've been making our way through God's big story, which we can read about in the Bible. The Bible is a collection of stories, poems, and letters, but when you put it all together, it's God's big story, the story of how God made us, loves us, and sent Jesus to be our Savior. We started back in the beginning, when God made the world, and everything in it. People turned away from God, but God had a plan to make things right again. God promised to bless the world through the family of a man named Abraham. When the time was right, Jesus, God's son, was born in Bethlehem. Lately, we've been looking at the life of Jesus, including some really important stories Jesus told. Those stories are something we call parables. On this particular day, as Jesus was teaching, a group of tax collectors and others who were considered outcasts gathered around him. The Pharisees and religious teachers were totally shocked by this. They were upset that Jesus spent time with people that they considered sinners. Jesus then told a series of parables. The third story Jesus told was about a lost son. There was a man who had two sons. The younger son spoke to his father. He said, Father, give me my share of the family property. So the father divided his property between his two sons. Now this was a really rude thing for the younger son to do. Back in those days, family money would only be passed on to the children after the father had died. But here the son was basically saying, Dad, just give me my money now. I want it more than I care about you. Not long after that, the younger son packed up all he had. Then he left for a country far away. When the younger son arrived in this faraway country, he started spending all his money and living it up. Big time. As Jesus said, there he wasted his money on wild living. He spent everything he had. Then the whole country ran low on food. So the son didn't have what he needed. Uh-oh, all of the son's money was gone? So what did he do? He went to work for someone who lived in that country. That person sent the son to the fields to feed the pigs. The son wanted to fill his stomach with the food the pigs were eating. But no one gave him anything. Okay, gross. Now you understand. Like, he was desperate, desperate. This was not a laughing matter for the son in Jesus' story. The young son was so desperate that he was actually thinking about eating pig slop. Ugh, disgusting. But then, the son began to think clearly again. He said, how many of my father's hired servants have more than enough food? But here I am dying from hunger. I will get up and go back to my father. I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven, and I have sinned against you. I am no longer fit to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up and went to his father. Yeah, the younger son set off for home. But while the son was still a long way off, his father saw him. This is how Jesus told it. While the son was still a long way off, his father saw him. He was filled with tender love for his son. He ran to him. He threw his arms around him and kissed him. The son didn't think that he deserved his father's love. He said, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer fit to be called your son. But the father was so happy that his son had come home. He called out to the servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattest calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. This son of mine was dead, and now he is alive again. He was lost, and now he is found. So they began to celebrate. In no time at all, the younger son was dressed in fresh clothes instead of rags. He found himself the guest of honor at a feast. But in the meantime, we can't forget about the older brother. The whole time his little brother was out living wild and wasting money, the older brother was working hard for his dad. The older brother had been out in the field all day. So when he came home to the sounds of music and dancing, he was shocked. 
he called one of the servants and asked him what was going on. The servant told him that his father had thrown a party because the younger son had returned safe and sound. Just think what you'd feel like if you were the older brother. The whole thing seemed so unfair. When the father came out and begged his older son to join the celebration, the older son was angry. He explained to his father how upset he was, but the father said to him, My son, you are always with me. Everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad this brother of yours was dead, and now he is alive again. He was lost, and now he is found. Now that was the end of the story Jesus told the crowd that day. Jesus didn't tell them what happened next, so we don't know either. Maybe the older brother had a change of heart and came inside to celebrate with his brother. Or maybe he stayed angry and stayed outside because he refused to forgive. It was clear from Jesus' story, though, that God is always there to forgive us. God is like the father in the story. It doesn't matter what we've done. God always, always welcomes us home with love. Remember, God will always forgive you. Say that with me. God will always forgive you. Jesus' story of the lost son is such an amazing reminder of God's love and forgiveness. God is the Father who forgives us, no matter what we've done or how we've messed up. That doesn't mean we should try to do bad things, but when we do, we can always come back to God and know that God will forgive us, because we know that we can trust God no matter what. Remember, God will always forgive you. Say that with me. God will always forgive you. Isn't that so good to know? I mean... Sometimes we're like the younger brother in the story. We mess up and we need to be forgiven. And God will always forgive you. Other times we're like the older brother. We might feel angry and jealous when we think that others have gotten away with their mistakes. But no matter what, I hope you'll always remember that God will always forgive you. I'm so glad to know that God has forgiven me. And the same is true for you you can have absolute confidence that God will always forgive you and welcomes you back no matter what. You can always talk to God and be completely honest because God loves you. What an amazing truth to know. Let's head up to small group and talk about that some more.